OK, welcome. So what we're going to be doing now is, before we were just simplifying trigonometric uh, um, expressions. And it was kind of a little arbitrary because there was really not, you know, not a right way or a wrong way to really kind of go about the answer. You could simplify it at different levels. And you know, it was really kind of arbitrary on what your answer was going to be or even how to do it. And it's going to be kind of similar now with verifying trigonometric identities. But with verifying trigonometric identities, the important thing is we're now we're going to be dealing with equations. So we're always going to want to make sure our left side is now going to equal our right side. So it is going to be a little bit more of, of a solution where you can always look back and say, oh, yes, OK. I know I can follow back my work and see that my answer is correct. With our simplifying, you're always just kind of having to double check and just you just need to make sure you did everything correctly. But as far as looking at the final answer, you know, it's kind of up in the air. Your answers always are going to vary. All right, so there's a couple steps that I want to go through and prepare you when we get into our verifying trigonometric identity. So rather than having expressions, we're now going to have an equation where we're going to have a trigonometric expression equal to another trigonometric expression. And what we're going to want to do is verify that they're equal, meaning we're going to want to make sure whatever's on the left side is now equal to the right side. So we've had a lot of practice with simplifying. Sorry, that's my bell. So we're going to, we've done a lot of practice with simplifying the problems, and that's why uh, we're going to want to work on the first thing first. Um, well, is you're going to want to just pick one side. That's actually not the first thing. I jumped ahead. First thing, when you're verifying, we know how to simplify identities, right? Or simplify expressions. So pick one side and just work on that one side. Don't try to be doing both sides, solving, adding to one side to the other. That is a, that is a method that you might want to go to in the end, which I'll talk about. But let's just try working on what we know best, which is simplifying. So pick one side and simplify it. Now, since you're going to be simplifying, if one side's more complicated than the other, that's the side that you're going to want to simplify, right? Because as simplifying, you're working it down to a more simplified answer, which is hopefully supposed to look like your other side, which is more simpler. All right. Um, so once you've kind of picked a side, you picked the most complicated side, and you're working on it, we have to know those trig identities. And you know, it's not a problem that I give you know, a lot of work for you guys to be working on, understanding those trig identities. It's really, really important that you guys have these trig identities uh, you know, written down and also you know, next to you or up here in your head, your most valuable resource. Because you're going to be using your trig identities a lot. And it's very important for you to know all your Pythagorean identities, making sure that when you're dealing with Pythagorean identities, know that sines and cosines pair up. Uh, tangent and secants pair up, and also cotangent and cosecants pair up. And also noticing that you're, by using your quotient and your reciprocal identities, there's going to be a lot of dividing out into one. So it's important to uh, rewrite those. Um, and that's what I was talking about looking ahead, is because you know, if you have, um, a lot of times, if you have like uh, cotangents, cosecants, well, you're going to want to look for those cotangent or cosecant squared so you can use Pythagorean identities so they'll be able to add or subtract out to zero. Um, so you want to kind of pair them together to use your trigonometric identities. The next thing is if you get really stuck, one thing that I um, like to do is you know, convert everything to sines and cosines. Because everything by using your reciprocal identities um, or your quotient identities can be written in sines and cosines. So convert everything to sines and cosines. Uh, the next thing is apply operations. Sometimes if you can't simplify, they're going to ask you to add, subtract. Um, or even on other sides, you could add and subtract. So sometimes you might even want to convert over to the other side. If you're just getting really stuck, first of all, you got to make sure you add. If there's a multiplication problem, maybe just multiply everything out through, right? Or maybe see if you can factor it out um, or add and subtract. And you know, worst case scenario, try to add something onto the other side and maybe see if then you can help, it'll help you simplify it. So you can always apply your operations, your basic operations, add, subtract, multiply, divide. Um, last but not least, like I said, do something. If you try simplifying and you can't get it done, maybe try like um, adding one term to the other side and then trying to simplify. See if maybe that might be able to spark something where you might be a lot of, sometimes that makes it more confusing, but sometimes that's just an easier way that people, that students understand a little bit more. So try something. And last is good luck. I love these types of problems because they're kind of like little brain teasers to me. Um, I remember when I was in pre-calculus, when I was in high school, I didn't really fall in love with the pre-calculus curriculum. It wasn't something I was like, oh, this is amazing. But once I got to the subject, I was like, I actually like this. I didn't really fully understand it at the time, but I liked it because it was like all little puzzles and just little rules that kind of follow. And you know, it's kind of like the Sudoku puzzles that kind of craze. It's, it's, it's fun. It's kind of little, it's a little challenge for you guys to always do. So you know, keep at it. Some of these problems are going to take a really, really long time. Some of you can get them like this. But the main important thing is just look for different ways to solve them. Try to think outside the box, different ways you can solve it. And I hope you enjoy. So there you go. 
good luck, and let's get on with some videos. Thanks.